But the thing that jumped off the page to me was a backstage, a backstage segment that I don't know we were supposed to see. Uh, a conversation between yourself and Brian Danielson. Of course, part of that aired on television, but the extended cut is on YouTube. And um, I just got to know, like, what can you tell me about where things stand with Brian Danielson and, and, and what all happened last Wednesday? Well, Conrad, our my award listeners, this is kind of appealing the layer of the onion back. Um, Brian's health, I'll say this. I think he is literally, and I say this, this is uh, a shoot brother, as they say, but legitimate. He is in a tug of war in his brain. Uh, I think his uh, wife, and I think, uh, without saying it, but I think the kids want dad at home uh, much more. And I think Brian, um, I still consider him, uh, I know he's, I don't even want to say on the tail end it, but he's been in his prime a while. Uh, and so he might be looking at his mortality and that is an uncomfortable feeling. I know at this stage of my career, Conrad, I am grateful. And I'm, uh, I don't say on borrowed time, knock on wood, but I, I know, uh, the opportunities for a guy like me don't come, uh, it is what it is. I'll say that. But for Brian, I think in a lot of ways, the mortality of his career of performing at the highest level, uh, the self doubt and folks, this is about as real as it can get. And look, I've, I've been around the nature boy, Ric Flair, and I've been around Lawler. I've been around a lot of guys that have seen them tra transition. I'll call it from primetime main event to kind of on the, the tail end. And then, they kind of slip away and then they come back. And I was always amazed at a guy like Terry Funk uh, that that did a retirement match. And, and at the time he felt it and then would come back and I don't say reinvent himself, but take a different avenue. I think Brian, for the first time in his career, is kind of staring down that barrel um, in a for a performer, for a wrestler. Specifically for a professional wrestler, it is an uncomfortable feeling. And the first thing that I believe, uh, and the reason I think I can speak so candidly and open and also from, I've experienced this and I've been around others that experience, and I've talked to other guys that have experienced this. I mean, Mick, me and Mick Foley had a conversation, I don't know, a year and a half ago that kind of touched in and out of that, but, but. Brian, and I've had multiple conversations like this, I almost feel as if, as we stand here today, recording my world, his enemy is not Swerve or the schedule or the grind or, or anything else other than, I think his biggest obstacle is between his ears. Yeah, I get that. And I, I, I really do think that I'm trying to encourage him. And, and we did show some of this on camera, but I, I'm, I'm also in little small talks, whether it's catering or coffee or whatever it may be. Um, I'm trying to encourage him, uh, that the obstacle that he may or may not feel, cause I tread lightly on this. I hope he hears this at some point. But also, I, I do, I, I try tried to encourage him that the obstacle he is feeling right now, the uncomfortableness, the mortality of the peak of his career, that's actually the way. That is the opportunity for him to face his situation head on and bust through it and say, if this is my last shot, at, at truly performing on the highest level that he holds him to is damn dude, make it your best shot. Don't leave anything on the table. Um, and he's just not there yet at all. We'll stay tuned and see what happens from what I understand. Brian Danielson is going to be sharing his feelings tomorrow night on dynamite. Don't you dare miss it. Tickets are on sale. Now, if you want to be there, perhaps to witness history at AEWTIX.com. I'll be watching a course on Turner stations as well. I couldn't help, but notice, man, you were uh, in the ring in your hometown on Friday night. Talk to me about the last outlaw 
at the Bridgestone Arena. My goodness, Mr. Nashville, look at you. you and we I just touched on that a second ago, but Connie, um, Wednesday night, it, we obviously in Nashville, Bridgestone Arena, was the first time in a lot of years. All my kids were there. Now they're my oldest is 27. Her her, her boyfriend, um, anyway, boyfriends were there, best friends, and it's funny how time flies away. So I mean, and, and a lot of the, we haven't been together at a wrestling show that some, some of the girls hadn't been to wrestling show in a long time. Uh, but, uh, my sister's son, Jackson Matthews, um, his dad Tate, but anyway, Jackson is a incoming freshman on Rocky top, uh, Connie, he's playing for the Vols next year. It's he, he was at the event on Wednesday, uh, but it was Jackson's first time to see me wrestle and he's 18, 19. And kind of, are you kidding? I mean, it, it was, it was surreal. Uh, I had a blast. I was sore, dude. <laughs> I was sore, uh, for a couple of days uh, on that, but, uh, yeah, the, um, the ramp, no, the, the, well, oh gosh, I'm, I'm, what's the, what's the title of the match we had? Cause it's a, it's a really cool concept. It's a great way to use two rings. Cause you're going to have it there for blood and guts. And then when you have to sh film content for Friday night, you got two rings. So how are we going to make sense of it? And so you basically have, um, uh, two, Ten man. It was a royal rampage. Royal rampage. Royal rampage. I, I almost said rampage royal, and I knew that wasn't right. A, a royal rampage. Two basically ten man battle rolls, um, and and you know you staggered entrances, and then you ended up with a winner in one ring, with a winner in another ring, and they face each other. And Darby is getting the title shot uh, at Arthur Ashe uh, in September. But Conrad uh, coming out and in, in the hometown reception. Uh, I'm still kind of shocked. It was, uh, it was special. I, I will say this. It, it was special. And, you know, I've never been in the ring with Claudio, um, you know, little Easter eggs for me that I'll share with our audience. You know, just, I've, I've watched Claudio, um, for years. He had already signed with ring of honor, uh, when I was ho hopeful to, to, get him to be a part of, uh, of our team at one time. It just always kind of missed it, but I, I have admired his work, um, for, for, I mean, literally for years and years and years. Um, he's, he's a unique skill set, uh, and there are others, uh, but you know, being in the ring with him the other night, and I don't know, man, old baby face, Jeff Jarrett, simply irresistible Conrad. What in the hell is going on in 2024? I, I have no idea what world we're living in. 